Hi, Elise Dewsbury here with another installment of my How to Get No Feedback from Elise vlog. And this is indeed the last um, vlog. This is my 24th, so it's the last of my second year, and I'm finishing up my little mini-series uh, talking about, um, about uh, um, the, the book function of song and how book writers are involved in it. And I want to finish it up by talking about three particular kinds of songs that I don't much care for. Uh, you will find many examples of them in the literature in the past, and you will find them in the literature in the present, and you may write them for your musical, and that may be perfectly fine. But what I'm going to do is talk about these three kinds of songs and suggest that before you write one of them, you think really hard about what your alternatives are. And is there something else that you could put here? It doesn't mean you can't write this kind of a song, but I want you to not just do it out of a matter of course because these kinds of songs are so prevalent. Uh, but uh, uh, but really think hard about what else could this be and would that be better? Okay, so um, the one type of song is the what what, uh, what my uh, mentor John Sparks refers to as the Merry Villager song, uh, which is a big chorus of people who at the top of the show or at the top of the second act come out basically and say, you know, we're, you know, it's the, it's the merry month of May and we're having a good time, or we, we all live in this town and we like it here. And they basically introduce the audience to uh, the world of the show, or or um, you know what's or where they are, in, uh, um, who they are, uh, you know where we are in the world in the time in time period that sort of thing. Uh, the uh, they're very useful songs for setting the scene and for getting everything organized. But I think uh, one of the drawbacks is that you have to think, not that I was going to say realistically, not that a musical is realistic, but um, but who are they singing to? If this is a group of townspeople singing, you know, we live in the beautiful city of Detroit and we make cars, who are they telling this to? Who is their audience? Are they literally breaking the fourth wall? Because this is information they already know. So if you want to have a big introductory song in which people are uh, letting us know who they are, see if you can put it in the context of something that they're doing together that they, that they actually need to talk to each other about. Um, and from it, we will glean the information we need. You don't need to just hand us this information on a silver plate by having people come out and say, uh, we're the people who live in Detroit and we make cars. Um, you could have them come out making cars and saying, boy, I hate being on, you know, my, my, I hate being on the, on the assembly line. This is a terrible life. And I'm going to go, oh, they, they make cars. Um, so don't just hand me the information on a plate and have all these people just stand out, break the fourth wall and tell me who they are and where I am. Um, I mean, do if you want to, but think about the alternative of trying to set the scene so that there's a reason why these people are all singing together to each other, stuff that, that, that they actually need to impart to each other that will give me enough clues to understand where I am and who these people are. Let me do the detective work. Don't just hand it all to me, I don't think. Um, okay, so uh, that's one type of song. The other thing is if you find that, you've, that you have, um, you know, in more than one place in your show, um, or even one, have uh, written a very dramatic scene, for instance, between a couple of people and they're having a big confrontation and they yell and scream at each other and one of them storms out and the other one sings a ballad. Or not a ballad, but a solo. Um, if you find that you are constantly uh, getting all kinds of you know great action and dramatic things happening and then clearing the stage and leaving someone to sing by themselves, again, there's no reason why you can't have one of those in your show. You're going to find a lot of them in the, in the literature and they can be very powerful songs, so I, I'll grant you one. But every time you find yourself wanting to write one of those, stop and think, what would happen if I left those two people on stage? What if they sang to each other? What if this was a confrontation? What if there was a reason for these, you know, what if, what if I just changed the pronouns and after, instead of after the person leaves, the person is singing, you know, I love you, but you don't understand me. What if they were singing it directly to the person? Ask yourself those questions. What are you missing out on in terms of the dramatic tension? This goes back to a couple of vlogs ago when I said, make sure that you understand the power of the song. So if you're going to put all the dramatic tension in the scene and then clear the stage so someone can sing about all that dramatic tension that just happened, then I don't think you're making full use of the power of the song. Think for at least a moment what would happen if you didn't clear the stage and, and these people sang at each other and had something to accomplish through their song. Um, you know, clear the stage and write your power ballad if you want, but every time you feel the urge to do that, stop and think, what else could this be? And could it be more powerful if I made an alternative choice? And then the third type of song that I want to talk about is what I would call an I am song. 
I'm sure you've heard a lot of talk about the I want song that's supposed to happen near the beginning of the show when the lead character tells us what they want. That's all well and good. Um, but often people find themselves writing an I am song. Often it's the villain or the secondary character who basically comes in and says, I'm a villain. I'm a terrible person. I, I, I like to you know eat children for breakfast. And they just they basically tell us who they are and what kind of a person they are. This is a similar category of song to the Merry Villagers one I talked about, where this, this implies that the character, for some reason, needs to break the fourth wall and tell the audience who they are. This is not information the character needs to know. This is not a decision the character needs to make. This is just information that you as a writer want the audience to know, and you also think it's going to be a fun song, and it often is. Um, however, I would encourage you to think about, is there a different way to get this I am song, to get the information about who this person is out there in a way that would make more logical sense from a story point? What does, how, how would this character communicate who they are? Again, don't hand it to me on a silver platter by having a character come out and say, I am evil. See if you can figure out how to write a song in which the character behaves in an evil way, and I get to walk away from it going, oh, this is an evil character. I get to figure that out, and the character gets to be accomplishing plot instead of simply giving me information that the character already knows. Um, I, uh, I, I'm not sure whether I spoke about this already or not, but I will again just in case, because you probably haven't watched all 24 of my blogs. Uh, an example of this for me, and there are many, many, I'm sure, but an example of, of this um, for me would be in um, You're in Town. Uh, in, the, in the song Don't Be the Bunny. It would be easy for Caldwell Cladwell to come out and, and say to his daughter, I'm evil, honey. I like being evil. I like making people pay to pee. And, you know, I just, I like, you know, killing them if they don't do what I want. And I'm evil. That's just who I am. But instead, in Urinetown, uh, that team decided to write a song in which Caldwell B. Cladwell explains to his daughter how she should behave in the world of business if she wants to come and join his business. And he basically says to her, look, you want to make sure that in business, um, you're not the bunny. You're not the one who's having things done to them. You want to make sure that you're the one who's doing the things to the bunny. Right? And so by the end of that song, you know that Caldwell B. Cladwell is an evil man who does terrible things to people. But he never says that. He simply gives his daughter advice about how to succeed in business. And he tells her, don't be the bunny. So that's a perfect example to me of how we come out at the other end of that song 100% knowing who this man is. And we love the song. It's hysterically funny. But it is. But he is delivering information that actually needs to be delivered. He isn't turning to the audience and telling them he's evil. He's not even turning to his daughter and telling her he's evil. He's giving his daughter advice that he thinks is really good advice about how to succeed in business. And we, as the audience, are the sleuths who are walking away from that going, this is an evil guy. So I would, I would leave that with you. If you find yourself wanting to write a Merry Villager song or an I Am song or a Clear the Deck So I Can Sing a Solo song, uh, do it if you must, but stop for a moment and think, what else could this moment be that would be more uh, dramatically interesting and therefore I think would make the song just that much more powerful. That's what I'll leave you with this year and I look forward to uh, another year of vlogs coming up soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.